This Learn the Electrics video is part three of our mini series on basic electronics. In this video, we will look at full wave rectifiers and converting AC voltages into DC. This is a very important part of electronics since we often begin with a 230 volt AC source but want, for example, a 5 volt DC supply for a printed circuit board. We will often see as part of a circuit diagram, as shown here, a full wave rectifier circuit, and you may recognize this. Just about every electronic circuit will depend on one of these. But what is it, and how does it work? In this video, we will break this down into the various parts and make each of them more understandable. We will start with the transformer, and this will reduce the supply voltage down to a value close to the actual voltage required. This reduced voltage will then pass through a diode assembly to convert the AC alternating current into a direct current. This then needs to be smoothed so that the DC output is at a constant level and we will use capacitors for this. And, of course, there is the load to consider. What is the voltage being used for? The rating of the rectifier component must be able to supply the load safely and without overheating. So let's go back to the transformer. In this example, our basic transformer will convert 230 volts AC into 9 volts AC. Transformers work on alternating currents, and so the input and output are both alternating currents. We are using a step-down transformer. In other words, we are stepping down or reducing the input voltage from a higher voltage to a lower output voltage. The 230 volt input side is called the primary winding and the 9 volt output is the secondary winding. Some transformers have split windings and you may come across these in your work. In this drawing we have two secondary windings each giving 4.5 volts. This means that two separate circuits can be supplied from the same transformer. Or we can join the two secondary windings as shown and have a 9 volt output. This slide shows the transformer with split windings and indicated here are winding 1 and winding 2. And here is another transformer and you can clearly see that this one has both a split primary and a split secondary. It has two 120 volt primary windings that can be joined to make one 240 volt primary and it has two 9 volt secondary windings that can supply two 9 volt circuits or be joined to make one 18 volt supply. If we look at the diode part next, a diode is made from a small sliver of silicon and this forms a PN junction, a one way path for current to flow. Some diodes are made of germanium, but mostly silicon is used. The diode has an anode end and a cathode end, and the marker band on a diode indicates the cathode end. The anode is a positive lead, and the cathode the negative lead, and the symbol for a diode is also shown. Under normal conditions, if the anode voltage is more positive than the cathode, then current will flow through the diode. But if the cathode is more positive, this is called reverse biased, and the current will not flow. The diode will block the current. The diodes we are using here act as a one-way street, where a positive current can only flow one way through a diode, and negative current can only flow in the other direction. If we supplied an alternating current to a diode, then the top drawing shows that only the positive half cycles of voltage and current are allowed through. This is called half wave rectification. If we turn the diode around, only the negative half cycles can get through. What we want to do, the trick, is to arrange the diodes so that the half cycle gaps on the positive side are filled in with the other half cycles. This is the job of the full wave rectifier, or diode bridge rectifier as it can be called. To add the two half cycles together we can arrange four diodes 
in the pattern shown. And you may see these diodes on some circuit boards. Four diodes lying side by side is usually a good indication that these are the bridge rectifier diodes. The alternating current input is supplied as indicated and must go to the two points as shown. This AC input can be any voltage to achieve the required output. The output can be 5 volts, 9 volts, 100 volts or whatever from a transformer. And the type and wattage of diode must be matched to the secondary voltage and the current. The DC output is taken from the points shown here. Note that although this is direct current DC, it is in a raw state. It is fluctuating between zero volts and the maximum positive voltage. We need to do more with this. It is important that the diode arrangement and the input output connections are correct. Let's look at how the bridge rectifier works. Follow the numbered arrows shown in red. At the AC input number one is the more positive lead and so current flows through the diode at number two. This now appears across the load but only as half cycles. The current passes through the load at four, returning to the bridge by way of arrows five and six, and it then goes through the diode at arrow number seven and back to the transformer along arrow eight. Now for the other half cycle, and follow this closely. Look at the more positive input again. This is the bottom input lead now, since the alternating current has switched and made the top more negative. Along arrow number one, through a different diode at arrow number two, and onto the wire to the load at arrow number three. Follow the arrows four, five and six, and now through another different diode at seven, and back to the transformer via number eight. You can see that with the red positive half cycle, the red diodes allow current to pass, and with the green negative half cycle, the green diodes conduct. The green halves fill the gaps between the red halves, and miraculously, the half cycle outputs are all positive. We have converted an alternating positive and negative current into a full wave, all positive, direct current. Now we can look at the capacitors. Capacitors come in many shapes and physical sizes and in many different values. They are also made from many different materials or dielectric and all these different types will be discussed in a later video. Capacitors in this case act as storage devices similar to batteries. Electric current can be stored in them and released back into the circuit as needed. Some capacitors have a set polarity. They must be installed with respect to the positive and negative of the circuit. This type can only be used on DC circuits. But some capacitors do not have a polarity. They can be installed either way round. And this type of capacitor can be used on AC alternating current as well as on DC direct current. We now want to smooth this very lumpy DC waveform. And this is a very basic capacitor and load arrangement. If there was no smoothing capacitor installed, the DC waveform from the rectifier circuit would remain in its raw state, what we have just called lumpy. And although this is DC voltage, it is unacceptable in this form for many applications. We should always add a smoothing capacitor to the circuit. The capacitor will charge up during the peaks of the incoming DC voltage and slowly release the energy back into the circuit as shown by the green line at the top right. This green waveform still has some ripples on it, but it is a lot smoother than before. We can go a step further if we wish and use a voltage regulated chip or integrated circuit to give us what we call a ripple free output. This is a very smooth DC voltage. Looking at the waveforms at the top of this slide, you can see how the DC voltage has been smoothed by the capacitor and then smoothed and regulated even further by the voltage regulator to give us our ripple free output. Here we have shown two popular voltage regulator chips. 
They are available in many output voltages and in many different power ratings. Also shown is a PCB power supply. You can clearly see the four diodes, the smoothing capacitors and the voltage regulator. And that is the basics of AC to DC conversion and full wave rectifiers. These arrangements are a very important part of electronics and used in almost all electronic assemblies. Rather than look at the whole thing, it often helps to split the circuit into separate blocks as we did here. This helps with the understanding and our three blocks were the transformer part that reduces the line voltage to a lower voltage, the diodes, the voltage rectifier part that converts the AC into DC, and the smoothing part, the capacitors and voltage regulators that give us a nice smooth DC output. We hope that you found this video useful and that a little more knowledge has found its way into your mental toolbox. If you haven't done so already, please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and please press the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. Subscribing also helps us too and we really do appreciate this. Typing in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.